Michael is going to talk more in depth about this, is is a uh, readiness, uh, relief mm-hmm. readiness, if you will, that many of our small businesses are not in a organizational position to actually receive funds. An example of that is being that a business may may set up a, an organization as the LLC with the Secretary of State, but when they file their taxes, they may file as a sole proprietor. And when you go to file for the Mississippi Small Business Grant or even with the Pay Protection Program, those two things need to be one and the same because if they're not, it slows down the process of understanding how much money you're eligible for and just in general, if you're eligible to begin with. So I'd say that overall, I think our businesses are like many other businesses across the country in a state of critical condition, given that they need to have more access and more money. But I think that the challenges that they face can be addressed with one, better preparedness, and two, with more awareness around what federal and state reliefs are available to them. That's good. Michael? I I, uh, most definitely concur with that. What we've been seeing is that um, a number of our small businesses are trying to figure themselves out. Uh, with this new pandemic, uh, business as usual is is different. Uh, folks are having to understand how to uh, uh, repivot themselves, uh, look at different ways of, of doing business. Uh, <coughs> we talked to a number of our business owners and, and having them to really look at, you know, what are your true cost of goods sold? You got to really dig deep into understanding your business because your your margins now are getting tighter and tighter uh, because of I mean, this, this whole pandemic is going to really, uh, and, and I don't want to sound, you know, grim, but it's, it's real. We're not going to see the landscape that we saw three years ago of small business owners opening and, and growing in the next six to 12 months. I mean, it's going to be a different landscape. So businesses now, you're going to have to really sit down and, and look at your, your your pivot plan, you know, look at your, 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 your business plan on how you're going to relaunch yourself, your resiliency plan. Uh, and, and we're here to help uh, small business centers of um, uh, Mississippi. We're here to provide you free uh, services to help you repivot yourselves, to look deep into your financials, to, to see how we can, we can really get you back uh, in a positive profit margin uh, standpoint. But, but we're here to help. Well, thank you. Thank you for answering that question. And I, I want to um, hit a couple things before we move to my next question. A few things you had, uh, you said this relief readiness, um, Mr. Burt, you talked about. And I think when we talk about the COVID-19, even around businesses, I I talk all the time saying to businesses and specifically to women is, um, if you didn't have your house in order before, oh, what a great opportunity is right now. You're really, you're really understanding where your foundation were weak, where your cracks were. And, and, and look, and I say to women, don't beat yourself on the back about it. Um, hey, you know, many businesses, um, large and small, go through these particular challenges, but look at it as an opportunity. Don't get caught up in the shame of it or the, 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 the disappointment of it. Uh, even when you sit down to begin to sit with people who uh, can help you really dissect uh, your financial statements, d- dissect uh, your profit and loss that you, and, and even just your your practices uh, that you've been doing in your business. Don't get hung up about it. Just know that there's going to be good on the other side. And if and if be transparent with folks, uh, you know, open up your stuff with people that you trust to say, this is what my vision is. This is what my mission, this is what we wanted to do. Okay, so now how do I get there? How do, how do I pivot? And for many of us, there's going to be real solutions for it. For many of us, we're going to find out that maybe this ain't the business I need to be in. Maybe the now, even uh, uh, now that we're in the midst of COVID, those goods and services are not even what people are looking for. Um, you know, they, they shift. And I, I like the word you use, Michael, uh, your pivot plan. Um, I, I like that because that's the other thing that I'm excited about is that opportunities for uh, uh, women specifically to think of, to, to make this as an opportunity to, to change everything. If you, even if you were a business owner, you, you, you've been in uh, your career, but now you want, you're, you're interested in getting into creating your own business opportunity. I'm going to say to women, don't, don't say that this is not the time to do that. 
Um, uh, I think there are some opportunities there. I love what Hope is doing. There's a lot of opportunities Hope has there for women-owned businesses and minority businesses and all the variety of loans and those type of things. And Michael, also, one of the things uh, recently um, that Vic shared with me is this program that you have through the city uh, to uh, certify uh, women-owned businesses. Um, and, and I think that process is not as difficult as some of the other processes, the ones that are on the state and federal level. Tell us about that particular program before we move forward and how uh, women need to, women and minority business need to connect with that particular website. Because I found, I walked through that, I can't believe I've been doing business over 30 years, almost 30 years in, this, in the city of Jackson, and I have not put my information out there to be able to do that. And I recently just put that information out there, and we've been doing a lot of business, putting a lot of people work over the state of Mississippi. So I think this is an opportunity that me of us have overlooked. Right. Well, the, the, the city of Jackson back in 99, when Mayor Johnson was the, uh, the mayor, they put in place uh, what's called an EBO uh, ordinance. Uh, they wanted to be uh, very intentional on making sure opportunities were provided to minority-owned businesses. As a result of uh, a, a study that was done, uh, the program was birthed and what we do, uh, Vic is the coordinator of that program. We certify uh, minority-owned businesses. And when we say minority, we want to make sure we, we list all the ethnicities that are part of it. We have African-American business enterprise, Hispanic uh, business enterprise, Native American business enterprise, uh, and female uh, uh, business enterprise, along with Asian business enterprises. All of those entities uh, make up uh, uh, the MBE uh, program that, that we have here in the city. Uh, initially, you know, starting out, we were paper-based. Now it's online. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can go to the city's website to be able to go through the process to get certified as minority-owned business. And what that what that does for you is the city, uh, once again, is very intentional in, in ensuring that minorities have an opportunity in our procurement process. Whenever there's a bid that's lit, there's a participation uh, opportunity for minorities. And those minorities that are certified through our our program are the ones that are looked to be used to participate. So uh, we welcome the opportunity to, to guide you through the process. Big Sexton is the coordinator. Uh, uh, his number is 601-960-1055. So uh, he looked forward to getting a lot of calls and, yes. and, and on you to the website to uh, to get you certified. And Vic is wonderful. He he is so patient and uh and 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 uh works very hard and and uh will get you a very i find him to be very very responsive so yes. i i invite everybody to give him a call email go i'm sure his email is on the website too the, you know get him all these calls and everything right yeah the sexton the yeah. s-e-x-t-o-n at jackson ms dot gov you can get him there too okay all right, now let's get to the to the heat the heart of the of the matter. Uh, uh, back to business uh, grant. Uh, tell us about re re share with us the purpose of this back to business grant. Who are the population of businesses that should be looking to engage in this particular uh, grant program if they have not already? Yeah, I think I can hop in and okay. probably start like an overview of the program mm -hmm. and maybe kick it off to Michael to get down to the details of that particular question. Okay. Um, if that's okay with you, uh, Ms. Willie. Yeah, sure. That's wonderful. wonderful. Right. Good. So the Small Business Relief Program uh, is, is somewhat of Mississippi's response uh, to the pandemic uh, as it uh, according to the CARES Act. So Mississippi received $1.25 billion from the CARES Act and with that pocket, of, with that huge bucket of money, we created the uh, Small Business Relief Program to assist uh, eligible businesses. Now, the overall bucket of money, uh, the program is $200 million, okay? And that money has been split into two buckets, $240 million for grants and $60 million for direct payments. Now, grants range from $1,500 to $25,000 and are based on two months of expenses, while the direct payments are $2,000 that that is basically being mailed to eligible businesses to cover general COVID-19 related issues. Okay. Now the program is a great opportunity to help because it's, it, it prioritizes businesses that are in critical need. For example, 
For the first 21 days, the Mississippi Department of Authority will only consider applications from businesses that did not receive federal assistance, such as the Payment Protection Program or an Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Also, the Mississippi Department of Authority has set aside $40 million for the first 60 days for minority women-owned businesses. And we know that minority women-owned businesses have historically experienced challenges in excessive relief. So this set aside ensures that they have a fair chance of receiving aid. And furthermore, this program provides direct payments and grants for small businesses, not loans. So given the uncertainty of the economy, we know that this avoids increasing the debt burden of small businesses. So the question that many of you may be thinking and wondering is how do you apply? Well, you don't have to apply for the direct payments. Uh, the Mississippi Department of uh, revenue, I think, actually, will disperse payments to eligible businesses via mail. And businesses, uh, eligible businesses include businesses that have shut down forcibly or voluntarily due to federal, state, or local COVID-19 orders, and are in retail, trade, information, food, arts, and entertainment industries, to name just a few. But to see if you qualify, visit this website, the Department of Revenue uh, www.dor.ms.gov to see if you qualify for um, direct payments. And I can actually share the link in the chat. Uh, it's a, it'll be an online PDF that will show you all the requirements oh, okay. to receive Okay, and we said www.dor.ms.gov. Okay. Yeah, it's, okay. it's a lot longer than that, but what you want to do is you want to go to Department of Revenue's website, mm -hmm. and then in the top banner, you want to click on COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And once you get the expert page, you, the first link or option should be pertaining to COVID-19 direct payments. Okay. Click on that, and then it'll be a PDF that'll show you all the requirements to receive the uh, direct $2,000 direct payments. Okay. Okay, great. All righty. Now, concerning the grant program, again, this is a $240 million bucket. Um, you would want to visit the Back to Business Mississippi.org website. So that's www.backtobusinessms.org. And here the application is straightforward. You can save your progress at various points throughout the process, which is actually heaven sent. Now, eligible businesses for this grant program include for profit organizations, LLCs, sole proprietors, um, and businesses have to have been in operation as of March 1st, 2020. What's not included, or rather who's not eligible, are nonprofits and churches. They are not eligible for uh, grant funds in this, uh, in this pool of money. Now, concerning eligible expenses, they include utilities, costs incurred from adhering to public health measures, and payroll, just to name a few. Now, the grant amount, the amount of money that you receive in this grant program is calculated by either the, either the amount of eligible expenses incurred in that two-month period or by the number of full-time employees as of March 1st, 2020. So the two month period then is calculated from the date in which the business, the business reports you have experienced harm due to the pandemic. So it's, so when you report that you've experienced harm, it's gonna be two months out from that date, okay? So in effect, you have three funding options for this grant. There's gonna be a base payment of $1,500. That's the starting point. At the very least, if you send in an application, you're gonna get a base payment of $1,500. In addition to that $1,500, you can get $500 per full-time equivalent employee as of March 1st, and that, that grant amount would not exceed $25,000. Or you can calculate uh, the amount of money for eligible expenses on the application, which is, again, it's not to exceed $25,000, okay? So you got three options. Either you want to go for the base payment, you want to do the base payment plus the $500 per full-time employee, or you want to do the base payment plus uh, um, covering the eligible expenses. Okay, and again, I'm going to let uh, Mike really get into the details of. And of course, if you received any PPP monies, that would be deducted from that third option. Okay. Absolutely correct. That was my next point: is that any mm -hmm. you can receive grant funds even if you have received federal assistance, uh, whether that be the payment protection program the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or the Economic Injury Disaster Advance, which is up to $10,000, okay? But the reality is, is that that is going to be deducted from your um, from your award amount. 
Um, and if you have received a direct payment, that too will be deducted from your grant award amount. Okay. So you can still apply even if you even if you got federal assistance or the direct payment, it's just going to be deducted by that amount. Uh, but it would not be reduced by more than half. Okay. Now there are stipula there's a stipulation to that. Um, and one caveat is you cannot use federal money to cover the same expenses that you're going to use the grant for. You can't do that. Um, so at this point, I'll kick it off to Mike, Michael, sorry, Mike, to kick it off to Michael to talk about the details of the application. What, what, for example, to talk maybe more about what are eligible businesses and what are the eligible expenses. Okay, so uh, Ms. Jones, is it possible I can share my screen or? You know, I, I'm, a... I'm gonna try. I'm I'm horrible at this, but I <clears throat> I'm gonna try to allow you to um to share my screen. Uh, can you flip over for me? Is that your is that your proposal? Yeah, nope, that's not it. That's me being. Uh, Okay, I see we're here. Screen sharing. Say some hey, screen sharing. If, 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 if you would unshare yours, I could probably share mine then. Okay. Okay. okay let me try to share. And let me go to this one. There you go. Uh, Wonderful. Okay. Let's see. All right. So I'm going to just, just kind of go through this fairly quick, uh, but we are, we are here to help. Um, mm -hmm. So let me just go right to this part, the, mm -hmm. the business eligibility for that, that um, immediate cash disbursement. So there are a number of NIC codes that uh, Department of Revenue looks at. And the ones that are on the screen are the ones that they immediately will be able to disperse those funds to, the, to those individuals. Well, I guess you would say, well, what if my, I see my NIC code, but I didn't get a check. Mm -hmm. Then what we would do, we would say, okay, well, you need to send an email to COVID-19 relief at dor.ms.gov. Um, and what you want to do is provide them your name, your account number, the reason why you believe that you, you met the criteria, but you didn't uh, receive a payment. Um, that, that's extremely uh, important. And the... SPDCs, we're here to, to guide you through that process in our relationship with the state and the, uh, the DOR. Um, Mr. Berg talked about the, the eligibility uh, entities for this particular grant. So I'm just gonna go right to, so there's an application. There are things that you're gonna need for this particular application. Obviously your business name, uh, if you're registered with the Secretary of State, if not, uh, you don't have to be uh, registered with the Sec Secretary of State. It did mention that you can be a sole proprietorship. And if being a sole proprietorship, you can go to whatever municipality you, you, you operate in, go down to that city office and just get your privilege license. Technically, you are a sole proprietor. Uh, the type of business, the date of formation, uh, address, just basic uh, information that, that you should have. Uh, also, as it relates to um, certain tax information. So they go back as far as 218, uh, 219. Now, in the event that you uh, had just opened, let's say January 1, uh, 2020, you can still apply, um, but you would apply with the understanding that you're going to uh, file looking at a Schedule C on your, uh, on, on your tax return. Now, Michael, when that I think that's one of the questions that I'm asking for. There were businesses who uh, launched in January of 2020 who would not have a 2019 or 2018 tax return. Um, they would just file their their just like if they were filing, and uh, there was questions on on that. I think on the site saying asking about 2018, 2019. Did you file? So if, if they did not have returns for 2018, 2019, because they first launched January 1st, and you stated that the business, as long as you was in business by March 1st, 
how how is that handled? Are they penalized because they don't have the, the any uh, data for 2018-2019? Well, uh, based upon the information that we received from from the state is that if you <coughs> open your business legally, January 1, 2020, uh, you can still be able to apply for this particular back to business grant. Now, still keeping in mind, you're still looking at the two months of uh, business interruption. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just will not have that 2019 uh, tax return. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, and and so I I notice you know words are important. You said, and and this is what I heard from one of the women that I talked to. The the word is there is you can still apply. But does that mean that you also, unless uh, if you provide all the, the the information that's there, other than the twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen returns, you will still be eligible for this funding? Is is that what we're saying? Right, based upon what we've been receiving from MDA. Okay. Now there there are two uh, phases to this. Uh, you know, the first phase is obviously under the control of the Department of Revenue, which is at two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The uh, Mississippi Development Authority. Are the administrators, if you will, of the up to twenty-five thousand dollars back to business grant? Mm -hmm. So they're the ones that will say, "Yay or nay?" At mm -hmm. the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, we are the SBDCs. We're the advocate in helping them complete the application, get it submitted, and and, and, and navigate through the process. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, um, Mr. Berg talked about uh, uh, the the five hundred dollar. Uh, amount. So you're going to have to put in the, the number of employees that you have that are full-time employees or full-time equivalent. Obviously, two part-time employees uh, could be your one full-time employee uh, equivalent. Uh, general information, once again, that's, that's needed to apply for this 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 this, uh, this grant. Uh, you already stated, uh, uh, Ms. Jones, that the payment protection program, the idle. Uh, and other federal programs, as well as insurance proceeds, will be deducted from that that twenty five thousand dollar amount that uh, you're seeking to uh, uh, to get. You have to prove that that you actually uh, um, spent monies on be it lease agreements, uh, mortgage statements, proof of payments, itemization of uh, personal uh, uh, protective equipment. As you look at the documents for the uh, 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 submitting to the, the actual uh, through the portal. Let me get to the portal. Well, okay, here's the document that uh, Mr. Berg talked about, the website as well as 1-800 numbers that you can call if you have any questions as well as a local number. Um, let me just come down to, just to give you a feel of what the screen looked like. Uh, and also it. one thing that people can do once you go in and you create that account and fill out that application, you can go back on a regular basis just to check your status. Even though um, um, I've been checking that website and, and the status hasn't changed much, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, right, but right, uh, right. but you can. You the, the whole goal is that as you your application moves through the process, that you would have some idea of where you are along that process. If it's been uh, reviewed or you've been funded or whatever. Correct, correct. Just give you a look of uh, look at the screen of of, of, uh, of the grant. This is just one portion that talks about different taxes and whatnot that you'll be uh, the business interruption screen. It talks about when were you uh, interrupted, uh, when did the interruption end, and if the interruption interruption has not ended, then uh, you know obviously there's nothing you can put there. Uh, also, you need to describe the business interruption. So they want to have that documentation uh, as well. Let me see. Let me go to. And and I and while you're going through that, I want to go back um, and talk about this 21 days uh, because I think since the the back to the business website has launched and they were setting aside a, for certain specific businesses that had not. Uh, received any money from the PPP. We're way beyond that 21 days now. And many businesses are saying, uh, I, I haven't gotten a response. Uh, my my status box ha hasn't changed. Um, uh, Mr. Bird and, and Mr. Davis, can you answer us where we are along that process? 
and and um and and, and what why we we've, we've gone through that 21 days and beyond what 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 can we tell businesses right now do we can we can i mean help us on the way in the next week or next 30 days or next 60 days uh, what can we share with them at this point right so uh, on our end uh, unfortunately in that we are not uh you know, part of the approval process or even see the back end of the processing, you know, of this, we would just be, you know, encouraging to them, just let them know, just, you know, just stay the course, you know, continue mm-hmm. to check back uh, on, the, on the website. But other than that, we don't have any, any inroads, if you will, to be able to see where they are in the queue, if, if there's such a thing um, other than, if it's say your, your status is pending, um, just utilize the emails in or 1-800 numbers that's, that's being provided to just follow up with them. And let me remind our audience that um, if you have not received your $2,000 check from the Department of Revenue, uh, and many of you have not, we be reminded to send your email to COVID19relief at dor.ms.gov. COVID-19 relief at dor.ms.gov. And I, I must say to you, if you're a business owner on whatever level right now, you have not received that $2,000, Take, pull out your phone, pull out your laptop right now and shoot that email. Make sure you get uh, your name, uh, the name of your business contact information and also your state uh, uh, number um, uh, and, um, and ask them to, to let them know that you have not received your funding and see what's happening. Um, now, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Now, keep in mind, as it relates to DOR, mm-hmm. they have specific NIC codes for the businesses that will receive that uh, 2000 automatically. Mm-hmm. In the event that the business uh, NIC code is not one of those eligible uh, uh, businesses, then, you know, they probably won't get the 2000 However, if their NIC code is one of the, um, if it's one of the NIC codes, but they didn't receive, that's when they'll utilize that option to send that information to that email address along with the information that's, that's being requested. Also, so this, is, this is an right. opportunity for you to, you might have your, your code wrong. You know, a lot of businesses, exactly. I mean, I think that exactly. happens a lot uh, because exactly. some businesses are not Pacific you know, and, and you, you try to get a code that's close to what you do. So this might be an opportunity to get that corrected with the Department of Revenue. Um, and then maybe you can get your check issued at that time if that's your case. Exactly. So mm-hmm. I would encourage those who, who who have seen the NIC codes that are eligible, uh, but your NIC code that you think uh, is your NIC code is not mm-hmm. on there, reach out to uh, any of your SBDCs in your local area. Here in Jackson, we have uh, three uh, SBDCs. We'll gladly uh, walk you through the process to verify what your NIC code should be if you have it uh, incorrect. Um, Eligible expenses due to public health measures. As a business owner, you put in place and and acquired equipment and or um, additional expenses as it relates to getting your business back open, then those expenses are eligible as well, the ones that are presented to you on the screen at at the present time. Okay, we talked about the eligible expenses for the interruption, mortgage interest, rent, payroll, utilities, uh, and this is looking at a two-month period. Uh, Ms. Burke had already talked about that. Ineligible expenses, you know, the ones listed through one through eight, are not uh, uh, eligible. Um, the portal itself has a, a way for you to upload those documents uh, to them. So you don't have to go there. You just attach the files and shoot it directly to, uh, to that portal. Um, in the event that you are not, it says if you're in good standing, with, if you're not in good standing with the Secretary of State, then you're not eligible. Well, if you're sole partnership, generally you probably won't be. Uh, um, part of the Secretary of State portal. So disregard that that, that component. Uh, as well as now if you filed uh, bankruptcy or in the process of filing bankruptcy, that'll that'll cause a problem. And, and, and just businesses that are operating legally 
uh, from the standpoint of you having customers come to you, uh, you can either go to them, uh, and it's your day-to-day operation to be able to do that. It's extremely uh, uh, important. Uh, if you need uh, counseling or guidance through this process, we can be reached at 601-960-1638. Uh, my email address is mdavis at jacksonms.gov. Uh, we'll be glad to uh, provide uh, the assistance that you need, not only for this particular piece right here, but as well as looking at a, a repivot uh, plan for you, as, as, as well as creating a business resilience plan so that you can really, you know, grow uh, your business the way you, you need to grow it. Okay. So, um, Michael, I'm, I'm assuming your department now, SBDC Small Business Development Center, is that what we're calling it? Correct. Okay. Uh, the city of Jackson uh, has its own small business development center where we have the tools that we need to provide the technical assistance to uh, small businesses um, uh, in the Jackson uh, metro area. And Michael, do you have any ongoing webinars around those particular services that are available with the city? We do. What I'll do, uh, Ms. Jones, I'll send you the link okay. so that you can provide that to, to your network. We do have on-demand uh, webinars uh, right now. Uh, in light of the pandemic, we are mm-hmm. not having in-person uh, meetings, but we do do Zoom meetings. Uh, that's great too, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I'll send you that link so that you can provide that to your network um, so that they can look at any on-demand uh, tutorial that we have. I want to ask, um, use my last couple of minutes to talk a little bit about policy around uh, business policy in the state of Mississippi and where we are on that and some some opportunities there. But I want to ask you also, Michael, um, uh, what other opportunities that you might be able to share uh, today uh, beyond the Back to Business program? You know, a lot of folks, uh, we know about this program. It's been out there. Uh, many of us have engaged in it. Um, what other opportunities might uh, minority-owned businesses be overlooking right now that they need to reach out to? Right, so to my understanding, each uh, municipality of a certain size will have an opportunity to receive CARES monies as well. Uh, the city is in the process of, of, of drafting a, a, a plan to be able to provide grants to small business uh, uh, small businesses in Jackson. Uh, John Keaton, who's the deputy director of uh, uh, planning and development, who, who oversees the economic development uh, uh, department for the city, uh, will, will uh, eventually roll that program out. Uh, we just ask those who are interested that are located in the city of Jackson uh, to just you know, reach out to us, uh, stay connected, and once it goes live, then we'll be able to roll that information out to them. Okay, okay, great, great, great. Um, and uh, Mr. Bird, I want to talk, you're in a poly, policy analyst, and um, as we move forward, I think uh, a lot of times we get caught up in the, uh, you know, just trying to survive, and, and uh, as I say all the time, it's time for us to move forward and start thriving. But around policy, a business policy here in the state of Mississippi, what changes do you feel needs to happen on the legislative level to make small businesses uh, more, empower more small businesses, to support more small businesses? And I say for businesses like mine, uh, even workforce training. Yes, there are a lot of things that could be done to help small businesses, particularly during COVID-19 and the impact that the pandemic has had on the economy. One of the things I would raise is that we need more resources funneled through uh, community development financial institutions and minority depository institutions. And just to give you an example of what that means, HOPE is a CDFI, a Black-led CDFI, and through the Payment Protection Program, for example, we've been able to um, help over 2,000, technically 2,200 businesses and we deployed $74 million with the average loan being just slightly under $11,000. Um, and the loans we've had, or rather we've helped, businesses we've assisted have been uh, sole proprietors. So 40, nearly 40% of the businesses we've assisted have been sole proprietors. And uh, nearly 53% have been in uh, counties where the majority of pe- uh, citizens are people of color. So the idea is that there's something unique about a community development financial institution and a minority depository institution 
and that we're able to carry to those populations that are often overlooked by mainstream financial entities. So if we want to increase the outcomes, sorry, if we want to better the outcomes for small businesses, particularly those businesses of color, we should better leverage the, uh, the financial institutions that cater to them. So in one example, we want to say, how could the state of Mississippi better support CDFIs and MDIs? Mm-hmm. That's what and then I think, too, much like the Mississippi bought the Small Business Relief Program, is how do we decrease the barriers of relief for these small businesses? And so mm, the mm, program, mm. you notice with the grant program, we do have uh, language that direct uh, that directly targets sole proprietors. And we do have language that directly targets minority women-owned businesses. I think continuing to do much more of that is going to be uh extremely helpful for businesses that often have very weak relationships with financial institutions. And I want to take that to one level. Uh, and Mr. Burke, we're going to have to bring you back again to both of you. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to look, I don't know if I have, I don't know if I have time to dig a little deeper, but I'm going to start this conversation. And when we talk about uh, what you just stated, also, there is some businesses out there that are empowering those same communities and those same demographics in careers that pay big salaries. They, are, they have the capacity to hire individuals from those communities in salaries that's going to transform their lives instead of giving them training for the next training, for the next training, for the next training, and then it never results in any shift in that particular community. The other thing, when you talk about that, not only investing in in, in those particular types of foundations, but in those businesses who have the capability and who have the history and the track record of really empowering folks in careers that that's going to pay high money, great benefits, and those kind of things. Um, and so, I, I I I'm I think we our community specifically, and we women as color, we have to advocate for that. I think we have not done enough. Matter of fact, we haven't even tapped the the, the bucket on making sure that we go to the table with our legislators to make sure that we have a shift. In, in how we're spending our money in this state and where we're putting the money in the state. There's a lot of money going to community colleges right now. I, hey, I, community colleges, there is a place for us in this state and we need community colleges. The, we, they, they are an asset to our community, but they have not had a track record of work for going to work. They put people through training, but I don't see the, 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 the track record of the work piece. And, and nobody yet, I mean, people don't mind going to training, but the goal is to go to work. And if you've got a training program that doesn't directly connect people to work, and not just work, regular work, work that's going to elevate them with money that's going to really change their lives. Department of Labor says that women who have, have at least two children in the household need to be making $35,000 a year minimum to get herself out of poverty. Now, that's minimum. So here we have a target. We need to do we need to look at careers that pay 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars if we're talking about transformation. If we're just talk, talking about just getting people by, getting getting them fed, getting the rent paid, then you may look at that thirty five thousand dollars number. But when you talk about moving our communities to a new level of quality of life, then you're talking we need to be providing career opportunities for individuals and job opportunities and training that's going to put them in those jobs. IT jobs, uh, jobs in trucking and transportation, jobs as electricians, plumbers, all those jobs provide the opportunity. So we don't have to think about where those opportunities are. We know what they are. And Department of Labor been giving us the figures and data. And if we trust that department that's been around for centuries, that, that this data that they've been tracking uh, uh, is true, then that's where we need to focus on. And we need to say to our legislators, we need to say to the folks that have control of those dollars that this is where this money needs to go. We n- must have more conversations around that because we're filtering a lot of money through this state in a lot of different areas. It is not being done efficiently, productively, or when, with with our most uh, needed communities in mind. So thank you all so much today. We're down to our first, our last few minutes. 
Um, uh, would you all like to add any wrap up to uh, the information that's being provided? Well, only only to say that it's been a pleasure to to participate in this webinar. Uh, we are serious about wanting to be helpful to the small business community. Uh, our services are free. Uh, we want to provide you a leg up. So do do reach out to us and connect with us so that we can uh, do what we can do to uh, help you out. And I want to remind individuals that they can go to the website at uh, www.dor.ms.gov. Uh, with the Department of Revenue if you have not received the $2,000 um, uh, grant. And if you have not, you can email them at COVID19relief at dor.ms.gov. And uh, will you give a, a website also, Mr. Burke, for HOPE? Absolutely. So you can go to hopecu.org and check out our products there on our retail side, but you can also apply for the payment protection program, which will, uh, last time I checked was, was going to end August 8th. You can still apply for the payment protection program with us. Again, we take strong consideration to sole proprietors and small businesses. So please apply, 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 apply. I said, just apply. Just, you don't know, listen, closed mouths don't get fed. Just reach out there. Shoot your shot and let's see what happens. So apply to the PPP program, apply to the Mississippi Small Business Program. Check and see if you got a direct payment with the Department of Revenue, with the website. I shared it in the chat box, but get yourself out there so you can be safe. Also, Women for Progress, we post a lot of stuff to our Facebook page, and we have also have a separate group page. Um, the, about all kinds of opportunities that you don't get to see on your regular feeds and things like that especially those opportunities that impact women and minorities. So we want you to, to go to our, our page, a Women for Progress page. Uh, Women for Progress MS is that Facebook page. Like our page, and you'll make sure that you get those particular notifications. Matter of fact, uh, Innovate Mississippi in partnership with W.K. Kellogg Foundation. And you can go to Innovate Mississippi website, by the way. And I apologize, I don't have that link. But it's, it's posted out there on our page. But go to Innovate Mississippi's page, and there's a program out there that they're getting ready to really empower women and minorities in an entrepreneurship program and really support those particular entities. I'm excited about it. Uh, Ms. Teresa Kennedy is going to be working uh, in helping manage that program. So go to Innovate Mississippi's uh, website, and there's a link there where you can find out more information. There's a link where you can uh, sign up to be a part of that. So um, that's another really, really great source for you to do it. And there's a lot of opportunities out there. You got to keep your eyes and ears open. You got to connect with some people who are in the industry to make sure you're not uh, missing opportunities. And I want to say also reach out to Hope Credit Union. Uh, they have some real great loan opportunities to support our community and support women and minority uh, businesses. Um, they have had a track record when we talk about track record. Hope Credit Union and Hope Policy Institute, and I think it's Hope Enterprise Corporation. Uh, hope, hope, hope. If you want some hope, call Hope. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, yeah. So I want you to reach out to them. We've done. They've been very influential in 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 supporting our efforts at, at our corporation over the years. They've been a great partner. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I have not seen many times when they've said no, if, when you want to engage with them, even if you have an organization that you want to, them to engage with you on, if you have a business and you have employees and you're looking for some, uh, some opportunities there around, uh, even they've even come into our business and done budget classes, classes on budgeting pathways to home ownership. Uh, many of our, our students who are now going from making 25000 a year to $70,000 a year, we have engaged Hope to say, let's bring you in, have the conversation to how does people, walk people through the steps of getting home ownership. What does, uh, what does uh, uh, credit scores look like? Why we need to be, why we need to have our, I keep our eyes on our credit scores and what, how does that credit score impact our lives? So they are very influential and very, uh, they have the research and, and great programming around that to help you with that effort, uh, effort too. So reach out to Hope on, on all levels and, uh, and, and for, for information also. 
I want to thank you all both. Michael Davis, thank you so much for your work at the city of Jackson. Thank you for your commitment to the city of Jackson. How many years you've been there? Uh, we're on uh, 15. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you so much. And Mr. Vic Sackton, shout out to him also is that's been around the city of Jackson and, and helping businesses here in the city of Jackson. Thank you also for, uh, for your support. And, and we're so glad to meet you, Mr. Bird. And now that I have your contact information and Ms. Calandra Davis, who set up this uh, 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 podcast for us, shout out to yes. Ms. Davis. Thank you so yes, much for so doing much. that. She's wonderful. She's another amazing, amazing, amazing woman that's doing incredible things. So passionate. She's a superstar. She yeah. is a superstar. She's a Nefertiti, as we say. And yeah, uh, nice. she is wonderful. So thank you so much, Mr. Burton. We'll be calling on you again also to talk to get a little bit more deeper in what we need to do moving forward to empower businesses in the state of Mississippi. So thank you all so very, very much. You've been tuned in to the Working Woman Report, and that's every Wednesday right here from 12 to 1 p.m. I want to remind you again, if you missed our virtual celebration from last week, which, which from Sunday, it was powerful, amazing. Go to womenforprogressradio.com womenforprogressradio.com we have a lineup of agenda of wonderful individuals that made that event a success and shout out again to Greater Jackson Arts Council for their support in that particular effort. Okay, that's it. We'll uh, see you the same time next week. Thank you. Have a good week. See y'all later.